Well, praise welcome God back. and welcome back. And we got Thurman Scribner with us. And yes, and he is not politically correct at all, but he is heavenly correct. And uh, Tells it the way God wants it told. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. In other words, uh, obviously God is happy with what we're doing. I think so. Because he... I can assure you all the healings and all the miracles are not coming from me. That's right. You know, all these people that are getting healed, their lives are being changed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely Jesus. Amen. You know, and so he's a wonderful God and uh, I <laughs> love all the miracles he does. And I mean, just, I think about this woman that her and her husband came to a healing school about three or four months ago. And she said, you know, my husband and I have been wanting to come to a healing school for the last three years, but we have not been able because we're so far away. I forget where they live, but somewhere way off. But she said, we finally got everything together. And she said, we want to come and sit and hear you because she said, somebody gave us one of your CDs. And she said, when they gave it to me, I was sick with 23 incurable diseases. Oh my 23. goodness. 23. And she said, I was on 25 medications. That's 25. enough to kill her. <clears throat> and I was scheduled for surgery the next day. And somebody gave me Caitlin's Miracle. Oh, wow. She said, I listened to that two times through that night. Now, that's a long teaching. That set of CDs, Caitlin's Miracle, especially the one she was listening to, Caitlin's Miracle 2, it, it's about three hours long, you know, two and a half to three hours worth of teaching. She said, I listened to that thing and then listened to it over. And she said, the next morning when I got up, I called the doctor and says, forget it. I will not be in for my surgery. She said, I've just found out that Jesus is still the healer today. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 she said, he's not just a little bit of a healer. She said, this guy that was telling the story about his granddaughter and all these children that were raised from the dead virtually, she said, if he'll do that for him, he'll do it for me. Amen. So she said, I've been in sin and unbelief. And she said, I know my major sin is unbelief. She said, I repented of every sin. I broke the curse over myself. My husband prayed for me. And I said, now then, Lord, when Thurman said it had to be done in faith, and he showed me in your word where you said it had to be done in faith, so I know he's right. So in the name of Jesus, I am not going back to any more doctors. I am not going to have any surgery. I am completely healed, and I'm throwing away all these 25 medications, and I ain't never going to take another pill in the name of Jesus. I said, how long ago was that? She said, three years ago. <laughs> I said, have you been sick since? She said, not a sick day in three years. Praise Hallelujah. God. Now, isn't that amazing? It is amazing. She had been under the curse. She mm -hmm. heard the correct teaching, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the real teaching mm -hmm. that what God said in his word mm -hmm. with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. She got to hear me tell these things and then tell about all these babies that God healed, including my granddaughter. And see, it's dangerous when you start listening to the word of God. It's really dangerous. And so she believed it. Now, isn't that amazing? Amen. Now, you know, there's some people that you'll go in and say, let me lay hands on you and pray for you. And there's some churches, and this will happen. You walk up and start to, and they'll tell you, get away from me, get away from me. I don't believe that. Yeah. You know, they'll they'll sure. just run backwards. Mm -hmm. Get away from me. I don't believe that stuff went away with the apostles. It don't work no more. Well, if that's the way you believe, that's, what, so that's the way it is. You. It went away with mm -hmm. the apostles. Mm -hmm. It did. It mm -hmm. did. If you believe, Jesus did say in Mark 16, 17 and 18, these wonderful signs will follow Amen. those that believe. That's why I've, I've, I was looking that scripture up saying, that's why you see the miracles that you see all the time, because you believe. I believe if Jesus <laughs> said it, I could take it to the bank. Uh -huh. <laughs> he he, he's the one that does all Amen. these wonderful miracles for me, Tommy. I mean, when I say, without him, I'm just like Paul. Without him, I can't do a thing. That's right. But with him, there ain't nothing impossible. That's right. You know, I know people, Christians, good people, they go to churches that don't really believe what you believe. Oh, I know. And yet they, uh, they would rather walk around with canes, mm -hmm. have back surgeries, everything else, and still be worse off than they were when they went in there. And yet it, it's because their pastor doesn't teach them and doesn't believe that. So what's the answer to that? Get out of it. 
Yeah, that's it. You know, well, of course, the thing about it is, regardless of who you are, what kind of pastor you are, if just like Paul told Timothy, you have to teach these things gently mm -hmm. and patiently mm -hmm. to the people. Yes. Because, you know, we've been steeped in unbelief. Oh, but yes. it's, it's not a new thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been around forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus' own disciples couldn't heal a little boy. Mm -hmm. And he said, they said, why? He said, because of your unbelief. Mm -hmm. In other words, you don't spend enough time in fasting and praying. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, fasting? That must have been feasting, not <laughs> fasting. You know, when you start talking about fasting and praying, that's when you lose them. Mm -hmm. You know, come out to the church Friday night. We're going to fast and pray till Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Nobody shows up. Nobody shows up. <laughs> Very few, uh -huh. you know. Funny story, I got uh, Matt Shearer's. About 12 years ago, we had some good friends that, um, when we started really following things like you're talking about, they said, well, we don't think we can do that because our pastor doesn't believe that. And I said, and I, said, I just shook my head, you know, unbelief. And she said, and turned to her husband and says, well, honey, Who's going to bury us when we die if we leave the church? Now, that's my last concern. Who know Sam Hill's going to bury me when yeah, I'm dead? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I want to know what did I do beforehand because I want to see that eternal. Yeah. So, so when I die, nobody's going to bury me. Yeah. I don't care who buries me. I don't care if I'm buried or not. When I die, I'm going to be instantly in the presence of the Amen. king. Amen. You know, so I could care less this tent that I've been carrying around. It's getting pretty wore out anyway, you know. <laughs> so. yep. Thurman, you have healing schools. Yes, I have a healing school. And, and when are those healing schools? Well, actually, I've got it down to one a month now. <coughs> okay. I used to do two. I'd, for, a long, for several years, I did two, but I've, I've just dropped it down to one. So... Every second Saturday of every month. Okay. The second Saturday of every month, regardless of what day of the month that falls on, as long as it's the second Saturday. Okay. The second Saturday of every month from 1 to 5 p.m. in the afternoon, 1 to 5, at our church there in Argyle, Texas, at 7417 Faith Lane, Argyle, Texas, we teach a healing school, and we have people come from everywhere. I mean, I mean, everywhere, you know, yeah. I mean, and we hardly ever have more than 100 or 150 mm -hmm. come to a healing school, but, you know, they'll come from everywhere, mm -hmm. from California, Oregon, to Wisconsin, wow. to Oklahoma, to Florida, we, New York City, Maine, we've had them come from everywhere to that healing school. Sure. And, and people get healed. Mm -hmm. They come, hear the word, repent of their sins, mm -hmm. the prayer of faith is prayed for them, and they go home well. Mm -hmm. You know, I, in fact, uh, I've, just, I've just seen this so many thousands of times. I just, I now stand in awe, think, how, use the word a while ago that I don't like to use, how dumb <laughs> I was for so many years that I had this wonderful, awesome book and I carried to church every Sunday and didn't know nothing didn't about know it. Didn't know what was in it. Didn't know what was in it. Uh -huh. But when I started reading it, it was so powerful, yeah. you know, that I would go to my pastor or my Sunday school teacher, and what about this? Well, they would explain away what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you lay hands on the sick and they get, well, well, yeah, that was for the disciples. You know, that's not for us. That don't work today. I said, I can't find anywhere in the Bible where it says that. That's right. Yeah, I, I can't find that. Well, yeah, but that's just the way it is. And, and it's been, there's been, there is some seminary professors. I mean, if you look me up on the internet, you just go in and type in Thurman Scrivener, you'll find hundreds of thousands of places that I'm on the internet and of course some of the articles that are written about me is not positive. Right. Yeah, there's one or two or three uh, PhDs from seminaries that have written things and I've read some of those things and, and they tell people this guy is a fake, you know, he's not real, you know, he's teaching a false doctrine. <laughs> Show him the picture of that little girl. Yeah, I know. And you go and talk to uh, Sally and uh, Richard mm -hmm. and see what they say That's about right. that, you know. Uh, of course, uh, the other day there was a young man that come to a healing school and he said, you know, uh, I don't know if this stuff's real or not. You know, he said, I didn't, of course, there were probably 75, 80 people at that healing school and uh, the last one we had. And he said, you know, I didn't see anybody that seemed to get miraculously healed. So he said, how do I know this stuff's real? 
I said, well, it, you just have to believe by faith that it is real if you want to get healed. He said, can you just show me one person that's been miraculously healed? I said, sure. He said, who? I said, Dave Rosenfeld, right over there. I said, Dave, he works with us now. I said, he left a good job with Nortel because he had this same thing that this little girl had. And I said, eczema. And only difference is, I said, Dave had had it for 40 years. Ooh. She only had it eight years. Mm -hmm. But Dave had it 40 years <sighs> like that. I mean, he looked awful. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, of course, we have a teaching called Sickness is Satanic Oppression. And the first hour of that teaching is Dave giving his testimony with pictures of what he looked like. I mean, he looked like Job. You I'm know, I sure. mean, he had sores and balls. He couldn't even wear shoes. Oh. He had to wear flip-flops. He had such big old mm -hmm. running sores all over his feet. Mm. You know, I told him, I, told, I, I said, I don't care what you got. If you do what I tell you to do from this book, I guarantee God will heal you. Well, of course, you know, he's a nice guy. He didn't say anything back to me, but he's thinking, you know, <laughs> You're you, can't, crazy. <laughs> you can't guarantee God will do anything, uh, but I can. <laughs> but he started coming to my church, and, and he's a computer science engineer, you know, so he's not some dummy. He's mm -hmm. a very smart man, mm -hmm. very well educated, and he's been in church all of his life, you know, good Christian man. And he came to church listened to me three or four Sundays. Of course, by me being two to four every Sunday afternoon in my church, well, he could go to his church on Sunday morning, you mm -hmm. know, and then come out there in mm -hmm. the afternoon and hear me. That way he gets two teachings. And he found out that I taught a little different than anybody else he'd ever heard of. Imagine that. Yeah, imagine <laughs> that. And so then he got to believing that, well, it is in the book. You know, it's in my book. And so he started believing. So one day he said, you know, I need to get rid of my sin. We need to break the curse. We need to pray over him. We need to get healed. And so we did. And, of course, it wasn't two weeks like it was with Jenna. Dave, a year later, wow. he's still awful. Awful. And so we kept praying. We kept standing on God's Word. And finally, 20 total months later, he's healed. They still got all his scars. His scars are still on his body. I mean, you can see mm -hmm. him on his legs, mm -hmm. on his feet, but he's totally healed. Well, he came to me and asked me, Thurman, why do you think it took God so long to heal me? Hey, I'm not God. I don't know why he done this in two weeks for mm -hmm. Jenna. I don't know what it took 20 months for you. All I know is both of you got healed. Mm -hmm. And you both stood. And, of course, I said, Dave, I don't know. Sometimes God does it instantly. Sometimes it takes a little mm -hmm. time. But I said, that's about the longest length of time I've ever seen him take to heal somebody. I mm -hmm. said, and he said, well, how do I find out? I said, well, the only one I know knows the answer is God. Uh -huh. So I said, begin to pray. I said, he'll tell you. So Dave began to pray. Lord, why did it take so long for you to heal me? Now, you remember, this man goes to a good church in the Metroplex mm -hmm. every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he tithes and everything. And he began to petition God. God, Why? In the name of Jesus, you know, why did it take so long for me to get healed? And finally, the Lord spoke to him. He said, Dave, the reason it took so long for me to heal you is because I don't know who you are. Oh. Now, that wasn't what a church-going Christian wanted to hear. No. You don't know who I am? He said, Lord, I go to church every Sunday. I tithe. Oh, oh the Lord said, I know all that. I see you. I know exactly what you're doing. He said, what do you mean? I don't know you. He said, Dave, you and I have no intimacy. You might spend 10 or 15 minutes a day, maybe, in the Word. Some days you don't spend any time with me. So I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. He said, well, then, Lord, why did you heal me at all? He said, because you were persistent. You stayed with it, and you believed me. Mm -hmm. And so I finally just healed you. He said, now, if you'd had a really intimate walk with me, he said, your healing would have been very quick. Great lesson right there, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Great lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, Thurman, I'm in my book, in my last book, I had the one sentence in there that really disturbed a man. He thought it was the greatest statement he ever heard. I just said, I prayed and God knew my voice. He says, how did you know he knows his voice? I said, well, he knows every hair on my head. It says so in the Bible. Amen. So he knows that, he knows my voice. Amen. I got to think about it. And he says, you know, he gave his book came and got a copy of that book and gave it to his 82-year-old dad that's in the hospital in and out. And uh, his dad never would read anything. And he says, you know, that's a great book of miracles. And I thought, I wrote it as, a, as an engineer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's... And how to build TV stations. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit 
said to me, this is back in the holidays. I want you to write, rewrite the book and I want you to tell about miracles at what's happened here. Because I come to the conclusion, 99.9% .9 of Christians don't believe God does miracles. That's right, a lot of them does not. I don't understand why. Because it had been through our generations, yours and mine, we saw it so mistreated, then their children saw it so mistreated, and they just think it's just a lot of hullabaloo. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so sad, you know, and I think because we're not believing God, that's why we're suffering what we're suffering in the world. Sin brings forth death. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, just like the Word of God says, if you commit the sin unto death, it's over. And many people today are committing the sin unto death. And somebody said, what is it? Well, it can be many things. With God, He didn't tell us. He just said, all sin is unrighteousness, and you do not want to commit the sin unto death. So if you obey God and do what He says and believe in Him, I mean, He's real. I don't care what anybody tells you. The King is real. I see Him do too many awesome things. And just like that story we showed you a while ago about Jenna, that little girl didn't just get accidentally healed. Absolutely not. After eight years of mm -hmm. hell on earth, mm -hmm. being in the legal right of the devil, mm -hmm. because God just turned them over, said, okay, here she is. You know, I don't like that lying, and so Satan, she's yours. She's, you know, you can hold her captive. And boy, did he. Mm -hmm. I mean, he tormented that family, tormented that little girl for eight years. And then the very minute that God revealed to them that sin, and they repented of that sin, as soon as they repented, and we prayed the prayer of faith, the Lord stepped in and said, okay, Satan, you got to leave. Mm -hmm. You have no more legal claim to her. They've mm -hmm. done everything I told them to do. He's in control. The mm -hmm. devil is not in control. That's right. God That's is in right. control. And man, when he said it's over, man, that little girl got her layers of skin. I mean, she got brand new skin. And boy, what a beautiful job the king done on that little girl. He did. I know why you're here. You came here for a couple of reasons. One of them was for me. Um, this book I was telling you about, yeah. I put it aside about maybe three weeks ago. I said, ah, I'm not going to do it. The title of it is Why We Believe in Miracles. Yeah. So I got it out and I said, okay, God, I will go ahead and do it and, and show all the thousands of miracles that this lady and I have experienced in this thing Amen. that we know of. But you come along and you're telling these stories about the facts that we're not hearing. And it's time that we wake up, America. Wake up. Church, world, wherever you're watching this. Yeah. You know, Thurman, there's people watching this program. Hope I'm not cutting you off, Tommy. Mm -hmm. Who, when you showed that picture of that girl, mm -hmm. oh, that's fake. They've That's made a different little girl. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Girl. Yeah. These things don't happen. Mm -hmm. They do. But they do, and the things that you're talking about has happened oh, yeah. and will happen. Yeah. And so... Now, the thing up. about me, when if you... If, and a lot of people will say, oh, that's just Photoshop. You know, they just... They did that. Mm -hmm. They put all that on her. But let me tell you, I can produce these people, and I can produce... Just like right here with me today, I've got Dave. He come, he's always flies with me as my co-pilot, my navigator. Dave had 40 years. He had exactly what she had. And it was so bad, he couldn't even wear shoes. You know, I mean, he had to wear flip-flops. He could hardly wear clothes. It mm -hmm. hurt so bad. Mm -hmm. And he, he looked awful. And we've got documented proof of doctors that he went to and everything. And now then, he, after his healing, in fact, Dave told me just the other day, and he's been healed about eight or nine or 10 years, whatever it is. He told me the other day, he said, Pastor, this year, my skin and I have had the best relationship I've ever had in my life. <laughs> he said, I can go out in the cold and it don't bother me. I can go out in the heat and it don't bother me. My, in fact, the first or second year after he got healed, he was, his skin was dry and everything. And he said, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to put lotion on me or what? I said, no. He said, what am I going to do? I said, speak to it. Okay. I said, speak to your skin. God put that skin on there. That's your temple. You're in charge of it by the Spirit. And you speak to that skin and you command that skin and that body to produce the right amount of oils and liquids and fluids it's supposed to produce so it will be a perfect tent for you to live in. 
Speak to it. God gave you that power in Mark 11, 23 and 24. He started speaking to his body. He don't have use no creams or no nothing. He's here on the set with me today. He is. Yeah, he's, he's sitting right out there mm -hmm. in the audience right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and when say, people say, this stuff don't work, you go ask Dave if it right. works. Right. <laughs> he will tell you it works because he wasn't sick like Jenna for eight years. Mm -hmm. He was sick like that for 40 years. And just think, Dave tells me often, he said, if I hadn't met that one in a thousand that God talks about That's in the right. Word, I'd still be sick. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's time the church gets at least more than one oh, in a thousand. Oh, yes, yes. You know, all it took, God is no respecter mm -hmm. of persons. You know, if we get in His Word and study His Word and love uh -huh. Him and worship Him and praise Him, He'll give all of us this kind of revelation. Mm -hmm. That's He's what going He to... expects of us. Well, think of how many times you've been multiplied and sent around the world sitting here. That's right, yeah. Instantly. Yeah, yeah. We've seen people get healed of everything. We've seen people's lives change. Just like Norway, I still, I mean, I've been over there four or five times now and I get, con I get constant emails from people of Norway that have been restored, been healed, their children been healed, whatever. Hallelujah. It's, it's just amazing, you know. It works everywhere you go. Yeah. God's Word works everywhere in the world. Close this program out by telling somebody how to come to know the Lord. Wow. It's the simplest thing in the world. All you got to do is repent. Actually, all you got to do is say, Jesus, I love you. I believe you're real. And I want you to come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior. And that's how simple it is to get saved. When you do that, then he will make you a new creature. And if, if you really got saved, then you'll not want to do the old things you used to do you'll want to do the new things that the Spirit wants you to do. So that's how you can really tell you're born again, is if you want to obey God. Get in His Word, love Him, serve Him, praise Him, worship Him. Then after you get saved, make sure that you tell Him how sorry you are for all the bad things you've done in your life, and you make Him a promise, Lord, if you'll guide me and direct me, I will not do those bad things in the future. And if you will walk with God, he, he has redeemed you from that sin, and He will make you a new creature, and you'll get to live and experience the wonderful things that we get to experience on this earth, and you can walk in divine health if you'll believe God. He will bless you, and then when we die, who, whatever, whatever way it kills us, we get to go to heaven to be with the Lord, and then we'll get to come back here on this earth and reign and rule with Him forever as His body. It's going to be an awesome thing to know Jesus in the end days, Amen. which we're in. Praise God. Thank Amen. you, Thurman, and thanks for watching.